That's a nice touch. I didn't catch the first time. All Might's hair becomes Deku's whatever they are. <laughs> ears. Rabbit ears. Okay. All right. It's growing on me. <laughs> All Might pushes him forward. I like that. Nice shot of Bakugo admiring All Might. Dual paths. There's a lot more to this intro than I noticed the first time. Probably because I was talking about <laughs> I saw his relationship <laughs> with a girl that doesn't exist. If my work is good enough, will you please add it to his costume? If it's safe, sure. I like how it ends up being like shoes, sneakers. I'm seeing a commercial tie-in for Deku. With his stature and weight, Ida here is basically an armored tank equipped with an F1 engine. When you put it that way, <laughs> sounds pretty cool. Ooh, in that case, I know just what to do. What? What was that? Is that jealousy or something else? What was that a rocket expression? Right, this pulse laser. Straight out of Final Fantasy VIII. I got the idea for full cowing from Gran Torino and Kachan. Arm supporting braces. Nice. And iron soles that can act like cleats or armor. Nice. Yes! He can kick? <laughs> Amazing. Costume Gamma! Costume Gamma. And he's still, you know, it's pretty authentic to the original. The test. You okay, English right? the. That was close. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, as I was already analyzing. You just hope this means he actually can have a career. Speaking of ultimate techniques though, I feel like Deku's smashes are a thing. But also I love the description for the full cowling thing. I don't know if I missed that or just it never was really covered in great detail, but it's kind of an awesome touch how not only he, but a lot of the characters learn the techniques from each other and adapt to each other. It's an echo of the fact that they're growing from each other as people as well, which is one of the best parts of their relationship. One thing I really love that's been pointed out to me that I missed from episode 11 was that All Might's strategy to like take damage against All for One in order to deliver a final attack is very very Deku like which is super cool that All Might was able to learn from Deku and use that as like his final move in his career you know there's so many great intertwined lessons that they learn from each other dude Midoriya what was that dude. you swooped in and wasted that rock I always thought you were more of a puncher I am <laughs> I love how they're all making such a big deal out of the switch the kicking thing. Hatsume suggested them and I think they'll really up my game. Coming soon to a store near you? It's dangerous in here. You should be careful. Sorry for the scare, young Bakugo. In some ways, this is the safest room in the universe. <laughs> you watch yourself, All Might! What? To everyone else, I'm a weakling now. Someone who needs to be protected. I don't really think people are thinking about it that way. That was one of many bizarre reactions from Bakugo, but I think it seems more like a reaction out of fear that he would damage his hero. Because All Might is still their hero, no? I mean, you don't forget a lifetime of looking up to someone because they've had a physical change, you know what I mean? There are ways All Might could have lost people's respect, but that was not it, you know? Like, Season 3, Episode 11 was not the way to lose respect. He's always going to be Deku's hero. He's always going to be Bakugo's hero. Though I understand how that would be difficult for All Might to process, because... He's always been able to lean on his physical ability. But that feels more to me like a personal struggle, a personal viewpoint, rather than the way other people see him. At least his close friends. Maybe society at large is a different story. But for the students, All Might is All Might. And he'll always be All Might, I think. If anything, it can be a source of inspiration. You know, for me, I feel like there are people in my life who have done so much for me that no matter how things go in the future, I will forever feel like I'm in their debt. Although debt is the wrong word because it, it implies obligation. It's more like I feel great joy at being able to give back to them because of the intense amount of gratitude I feel for having them in my life. And Anytime I can come through for those people is a is a huge win. I'm like activated in ways that few other things activate me. And it's pretty obvious to me that these students are the kind to react in exactly the same way. Like they're going to take that legacy and they're going to be overjoyed to try to live up to that in All Might's absence, even if they're also somewhat terrified, even if they largely feel inadequate, you know. Class B is scheduled to use this training room every afternoon. Class B? Man. We're getting some, some rivalry. Eraser. Get your kids out of our way. Ooh. You're not trying to kick us out early when we have <laughs> ten minutes left, are you? I kind of like it. I kind of love it. Each school has at most one class at a single location. How sad we won't be able to face each other directly. Man, this guy's nuts. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. he's officially Where's, uh, what's demand. her name? All those other schools. To knock him out. Huh. Interesting. That is interesting. So they're not transfer students that I saw in the intro. They're other schools, which is pretty cool. I feel bad for the, the other schools will be made honestly up of students who've trained longer than you and with quirks you don't know about well, that, al Once that balances it out somewhat some of them are dragons Time to develop my quirk and improve my general endurance. How I thought it was the two you, items at once. I perfected a move that makes me even more frog-like than before. That is amazing. I'm sure even you'd look surprised, Toru. What's your story, Ochako? 
Yeah, what's eating her? Something's on her mind. Who is it, Midoriya or Ida? You're always <laughs> with those two. It is not Ida. It is not Ida. Let's not forget what happened to Ida's jet engine conversation when Deku showed up in the hallway. I'll put it in Attack on Titan terms. If they're the trio of Eren, Mikasa, and Armin, Uraraka is Eren, Ida is Mikasa, and Deku is Armin. Have you heard about my friend Armin? He's the best. <laughs> Come to think of it, there are other Uraraka Eren parallels. Like Uraraka just wants to kill everyone. That's her main motivation. Right now, it seems like Uraraka and Ida had that kind of relationship where you're friends just to pass time until the people you really like come into the picture and then they're invisible. It's not like I even know anything about dating. It's not good to force an investigation. <laughs> She's right. More importantly, it's late. So we really she put a wet blanket on that conversation. Uh, no! I want to hear everything! Yeah, dish it out. <laughs> yeah, the bubbles. The bubbles give it all away. That's not it. Oh? So what is it then? I mean, it's not based on nothing. I mean, it's not like Deku's extreme good looks, right? It's gotta be respect and deep admiration. What if I can't get my license? Mineta, <laughs> don't ask if you can. Say you will. Right. Oh. Sure. I've so got this! Why is it so touching to have Aizawa take time with Mineta? I love that. Am I being ridiculous right now or is that amazing? I feel validated. <laughs> <laughs> for some reason because of that because I'm like looking for goodness in Mineta as well I'm like deeply frustrated by the fact that it's not being explored enough But if it's good enough for Aizawa, it's good enough for me Just imagine how satisfying it would be if Mineta becomes amazing Imagine if people like Aizawa didn't give up on him and guided him into something better Wouldn't that be like the ultimate thing to reach for? It's tough because there's a meta consideration which is his perversion But isn't it too easy just to give up on them? Doesn't that defeat the purpose a little bit of like the idea of growth? and potential, pushing through challenges, authenticity, you know? You novice eggs will hatch into chicks. You'll be semi-pros. That's hilarious. They're graduated to chicks. Your best. All right! I can't wait You're gonna to get, get a heroic chicken! Let's call out <laughs> the usual, you guys! Is this Team Rocket? Team Rocket is here. Ultra! Who are you? I am so very extremely No, Now that is about. Who is this guy? I do not trust his enthusiasm. <laughs> you ain't in the East? She gets you in the West. Well, that's a nice way of building respect for them. What she is he? High. What is this, this I man? <laughs> is he a Wookiee? See, I really love UA High School. I guess UA students are not the only ones with passion. That has become abundantly clear. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Damn. Blood. Let's go. He bled from his far head, far head, no less. He's the same year as you all. <laughs> I like this guy right Top scores for students admitted through recommendations. But for some unknown reason, he turned down his acceptance to UA. Huh. Got a personal reason. He must be even better than Todoroki. Interesting. Inasa Yoarashi from Shiketsu High School. I'm not going to get that name, but I like this guy a lot already. That was a great introduction. Powerful and funny. Hold on. Is anyone else confused here? Yes. What is this man and why is he a Wookiee? He turned down his chance to enroll when it was offered? Yeah. What a weirdo. It's not that weird. There are a lot of reasons for that. We saw you on TV and at the hey, it's his girlfriend. Festival, but it's in, been a from the while intro. since we were this close in person. <laughs> Let's get married. No. I was more right than I thought. <laughs> oh, that's Miss Joke, the smile hero. Her quirk is outburst. Now that is definitely she a name people for a hero. Her to laugh, which affects their ability to think and keeps them from being able to move. I guess Aizawa cast neutralize on, on her joke. You have a future full of God. That sounds like an actual nightmare. <laughs> Why am I laughing more at Aizawa's jokes? Over here, everyone! This is UA! Oh, whoa! And another really school. Class wow, a lot so of amazing. new students. I remember at the beginning of the show, I was like, how are they possibly going to pull off this cast of students? And then Class B showed up, and I'm like, how the hell are they going to make both Class A and B shine? And now we have, like, eight schools. And I'm wise enough to know that they'll make it work. <laughs> At this point, I've realized. But I will not be learning their names. Seems like you ace had a lot of trouble this year. Must have been tough for you. Uh, yeah. But yeah. even so, you're all still aiming to become pro heroes. Is this quirk related? Is he stealing something from them? I'm very, very suspicious. You gotta be careful of being touched in this world. You have an especially strong will, don't this you? This is very brave addressing Today Bakugo do my in this manner. Or just talking you. to him at all really in general. You don't mind. Stop pretending. What you say doesn't match the look in your eyes. There's a strategy there. Bakugo just dodged a bullet. Hey, Totoroki, There's like some sleight of hand thing going on there. You were so cool at the sports festival. Uh, seriously? Stop fangirling. I'd be happy to find something for you. <laughs> hey. Have you heard about Grape Rush? It's pretty cool. Did you not warn your kids, Eraser? About? About what? Okay, then. Let's do this exam thing. I'm from, uh... The Heroes Public Safety Commission. This guy had a late night. Maybe someone should give this guy a break. Doesn't exactly seem safe. Yeah. Basically, 1,540 examinees compete in a free-for-all exercise. Look at the chicken dude! There's a, there's a chicken dude in, in there. Okay. 
That got me really excited for some reason. And since Stain was arrested, many people have expressed doubts about the status of heroes in society. He right. must be talking about Stain's convictions. Yes. The idea that most <laughs> pros aren't worthy of the name hero. That the only things they're after are fame and fortune. Is Stain now going to change the exams as well? Yeah, it's sort of an uncomfortable thought, but there are there are times where even the worst of ideologies are anchored around an element of truth. But the more I think about it, the more I think that like our response to actual issues, Stain's thing is just a little bit too simplistic and a little bit too easy and a little bit too emotional. It's just way too easy to find a target, you know, to find a group and to paint them with a broad brush and to assign them bad intentions. The reality is almost always going to be more complicated than that. I mean, we've seen heroes do both. Like a good example that comes to my mind is uh, Night Lady, who I thought was just sort of in it for the media exposure, but stepped up in the fight against All for One. And then taking that even further, let's say that there are heroes who are just solely in it for the fame and money. We don't give a crap. Is that really so bad that it warrants their deaths? So what? Like, let them be motivated for fame and money. The whole thing is sort of bizarre, yet rings true to me just because they're scapegoats. And it can be very appealing to find scapegoats, especially people who are in positions of power or in positions of wealth or fame, and make them targets of hatred and blame them for society's ills. When really, I think, often society's ills are way, way deeper than that and, and start at the base. You know, they start with beliefs of the individual people in the society. We like to see groups in a vacuum, but the reality is everything's interconnected. For example, I see so much hatred and ire directed at, at the rich. And while I definitely understand that sentiment, I feel like it misses so much of the picture, like... For one, the fact that people don't get rich in a vacuum. They get rich because people choose to buy their products or services, typically. Maybe people inherit money, but at some point, someone in their lineage did that thing and offered services or did something that allowed them to grow their wealth. And then the question is like, why shouldn't parents have the right to pass money down to their kids? This is barring out like corruption, which of course is a real thing, but I, you know, I think not really the main, the main way people get rich. And then another idea is that they're greedy because they're not sharing wealth. But that opens up a whole bunch of questions for me as well. Like, well, if the goal is to always distribute money down, why doesn't everybody who lives in comfort give everything they have to people below them? Because most people are the wealthy to someone else. So why is there this double standard where the wealthy have to give to us? We don't have to give people less fortunate. And I think there actually is an answer for that. And that is because on some level, we recognize that just giving does not actually solve any problems. It just delays the problem because the problem of resources and wealth is largely based on infrastructure and innovation, growing the size of the pie rather than moving the pie around. This is also not to say that I think by virtue of their wealth, wealthy people are great. It's just to say that their goodness as people is probably not really connected to their wealth or that you can't say they're bad people because they're wealthy. So for me, it's not really a logical thing. It's a targeted emotional attack. And so the more I think about it, the more Stain is a villain in that sense. He's not really getting at the actual nature of society. He's creating more barriers to it and creating more labels and false enemies. And I really don't know any other way around that than to increasingly focus on the individual and to just keep talking about nuance. But when you really think about it, getting paid makes sense. If you're going to risk your life to save someone, why shouldn't you ask for a reward, huh? To me, it's sort of disconnected. It just is what it is. It doesn't speak to evil or goodness. It's just money. You've got too many heroes working together in the streets these days to keep villains at bay. Honestly, Why? Why the too many? time between when an incident begins and when it's resolved is ridiculously short. Isn't that a good thing? This guy needs some sleep. I mean, obviously, but... The first hundred students to the requirements will pass today. There are over 1,500 people taking this That seems test. unfair to have a, a quarter like that. Shouldn't it be based on merit? This whole thing's messed up. See, he's falling, he's succumbing to the weird stain pressure. Weirdly, I feel like this scores points for stain because this is so arbitrary. This is something I suspect will come up and I think the more it's true, the worse it is for hero society. The question is how big of a connection is there between the hero title and the government? And also is hero just a license term or is it actually a values and actions term? If it's just a license term, if it's just people the government choose, let's say, or whatever bureaucracy this is chooses, then you're sort of at the mercy of whoever's at the helm of those things. And so it's not not necessarily going to be good and this really seems like an arbitrary and random decision that doesn't inspire a lot of confidence in this administration each of you will also have six of these balls the targets are programmed to light up whenever they've been touched by the ball it's like human quidditch it's similar to the entrance exam but going against people will be a lot harder than robots and also certain people are at a natural advantage although i guess that's that's often the case in these exams and for what so much sleep lost on this. 
Get this guy out. He's just not equipped. Show some dissatisfaction, Aizawa. Validate my feelings. Yes, thank you. Why is it that I can't find a moment of peace and quiet in my life? Oh, that's why. I can't believe you still have 20 students. You must actually like your class this time. He does. Not really. He really does. No, no, no. That's a lie. And yet, you didn't mention a thing to your class. I guess you just trust them to do what they need to do, for now. The best way to win is to team up with people whose powers you already know. Everyone! Well, you put it that way. Together, we'll fight them as a group. Oh, damn. That's awesome. This isn't a field trip, No. Idiot. Yeah. Tell him, Kirishima. It's hard for me to use my power safely when a big group's around. That's Hiroki. fair. I mean... Midoriya, there's no time. Let's go! Yes. Step up and add a second in command on this expedition. UA comes in at a severe disadvantage. No, no, no. No, no. Because Why do they keep underestimating festival is broadcast UA? Across the country, Class 1A. Showing off not just your students it doesn't quarters, matter. But their weaknesses and fighting styles, too. They're just built different, and Aizawa knows that. Validate my feelings, Aizawa. <laughs> if you like your class this year, then you should have warned your students about all this. We've seen it time and time again in this exam. <laughs> But there are multiple games being played. It's not just about getting their license now. They're first years. Aizawa cares about their licenses, but there are other things he cares about, like their growth. They're still going to have to overcome this either way. Tarshado, yeah. Nice. Right. Shaping up to be really cool. And they're fresh off their, like, their finishing move training, too. Oh, damn. That was oddly graphic. Real heroes could turn this situation around. Right, yeah. Besides, if they become pros, they'll face villains who already know their works. <laughs> Thank you for validating Perhaps my feelings, Aizawa, once again. We look a little further ahead than other schools. Yeah, bigger games to be played. Take your unfunny jokes and leave. We've got this, you guys! <laughs> Show them what UA can do! Damn right. I'm there. I'm all the way there. So once again, the show delivers with the really cool setups for events or battles or whatever. Throwing the other schools in, even before we know them, is kind of exciting. It immediately gives me this feeling of like wanting to defend the, <laughs> the UA title, you know what I mean? Wanting to defend the class 1A group, which they will. They're going to crush it. I mean, I don't know if they'll win, but I would bet that they will, at least in some important way. Like I've said, this is not the story of Deku becoming the ultimate hero alone. It's the story of this class becoming the ultimate group of heroes. And every experience they have only makes them better and only sort of shoots them ahead of their competition even faster. So the handicap is sort of essential, but I don't think it'll do all that much really. And then you have this weird sort of, I don't know, maybe it's just set up for this event. Maybe that's the whole reason for that weird bureaucratic thing, but is there not some weirdness to the, the bureaucratic, bureaucratic element of Hero Society and the government element of Hero Society? That guy does not seem like the best administrator. It does not seem like this was the best conceived event. It seems like they're succumbing to pressure. It seems like they actually have maybe lost some of their guiding principles and their reasons for being. Isn't it a good thing that villain encounters are stopped so quickly? Doesn't that mean the heroes are earning their keep, you know? And also wouldn't reducing the number of pro heroes not be something you have to decide bureaucratically, but rather something that would happen naturally. Like if there are too many, there are just not enough sponsorship deals, let's say, or whatever, or paychecks to go around. Is that what it is? Are they paid by the government? How do they get paid? If they get paid from the government, that explains not having more people coming in. But that still doesn't explain the idea that villain encounters are being stopped too quickly. But on a more fun note, this should be a really, really great arc. I think it's going to be really exciting to see them come head to head in another sort of like civilian way. This is yet another tournament, in a sense. So that's it for episode 15. I'll see you guys next time when the battle for the balls continues.